and somewhere in there you have the brain and then you have here the pituitary and somewhere here you have the pineal gland. They tell us that this pineal gland is formed like an eye, like an atrophied eye, that it was an eye sometime. But if it was really an atrophied eye, then why hide it under the brain if it was supposed to see light? But we know that as an eye, it's very sensitive to light because when light hits it, it can't hit it directly, of course, somehow it gets the information about light, then it produces certain things, chemicals in your body, and when there is no light, it produces others. So the moment the light goes off, it starts producing things like, for example, melatonin, and it puts you to sleep. But if this was the main reason for this, then the logical place for it would be somewhere out there. If it's an organ that senses light, the logical place for it would be somewhere where it can get the light. Or why would we need it to begin with? Because the eyes can do it for us. I mean, the eyes can sense the light and send the information to the brain. Why have something that looks like an eye that gets information from outside, but at the same time is pointing downwards under the brain? It must be when we speak of its relationship to light. Now we are speaking about light being created in our system. We create our light. So it is sensitive. It could be sensitive to something there, but it is also related to some inner light. You know, this point in the ear, when you have your ear like that, in Chinese medicine, you imagine the ear like this to be like an inverted fetus with the eyes here, the hands here, you see, and the legs here, it's like, like that. And the points here in treatment, they reflect every organ in your body. So your whole body is present in your ear like that. Now, in ancient times, there was nothing called jewelry. You wear jewelry here, you wear jewelry there, no. At the time when the door was open, you used things on your body for certain interactions with the forces of nature. So this point here in Chinese acupuncture is called the point of inner light. And if you put some crystals or diamonds here, that means you activate through resonance, you enter into resonance with your inner light. So your inner vision gets activated. And when they had the, the priestesses, the young priestess in the temples, one of the way to activate their inner vision was to put any type of crystal or diamond here, depending on what you wanted uh, to do, you see. Today, you find people piercing everywhere. Now that's very, very dangerous. You could completely disrupt the functioning of your physical organs by piercing at this point or at that point or this point. They don't know that every point in the body is related to a certain organ and you don't know the point you are piercing with what is it related, what are you really uh, piercing and what metal are you putting there and what thing, something might be good in one place and not in the other and, and all that. So it's very, very dangerous. We have seen there is evidence that the ancient Egyptians did some piercing and things and the Sumerians did it, or we have evidence of tattoos in ancient times and all that, but they chose the right symbol, the right shape on the right spot and all that. It wasn't just playing around. So if this is inner vision, why here? Why looking here? It must have a link here and something here. Your spine goes down here, but why here? Is it looking at something there? The heart is the place where you have the most blood in your body. So it's the center of the fiery element. And fire produces light. So the mystical connection of light of the heart perceived by the pineal gland, illumination, and then what's perceived out here with the visual center. So this light is in resonance with this center. So your inner light is here and it is on a harmonic, a higher harmonic to the actual light you perceive in colors. That's why in any mystical experience, the light effect, I mean, if you do some meditation or do some prayer or something, sometimes you can see that there's some slightly more light in your vision. So there's a link between the centers here, pituitary, pineal, 
heart and the brain then. Now, look at it that way. In order that you perceive your, your reality, you must have working senses. That means your body must function before you can perceive a reality. So what runs your body? Is it within your perceived reality or from outside? I mean, your heartbeat, your lungs, all the rhythms of your body, the laws that govern life, the laws that govern life are not coming from your perceived reality. They're coming from the total reality. The whole universe is working through you in there and then you become alive and then you make a, your perceived reality. But what really work all those rhythms are methods of communication. Remember we said method, rhythm are communication. So you're communicating with the whole universe. Your life is through the life of the universe. What are the laws that make you breathe, think? Or what are, where do those laws come from? Those archetypal laws must be beyond the perceived reality because they must be there first for us to see perceived reality. Now, is the light that you see in front of you produced by the sun or by you? No, the sun is radiating energy. Energy, your brain converts it into light. So you are producing the light. So if you want to see your inner light, it's in front of you. You see, it's right in front of you there. You are producing this perceived reality. It's produced in your brain. I'll tell you something. When you close your eyes and you dream, or when you visualize, does the picture you visualize, whether you're awake or does it have colors and, and light and everything? Does it? Okay, that means you produce your own light. So all the senses are created in the brain. So you are only taking 5% of the whole. So if you can only perceive 5% of the whole, how can you assume that you are translating the whole reality out there. No way, that's why you call perceived reality. If I make my reality, I'm like a projector, you know, when you go to the movies, you, you watch the screen, and then in front of you there on the screen, you see the film, don't you? You have to see the film out there, and you think the film is out there. Is the film out there? No, where is the film? No, it's in the projector. I mean, where is the film that you see out there? It's a roll of film in the projector. But you think it's out in front of you there because it is projected there. What projects it? Light. Light. I'm taking another uh, example. I'm going a step further. Now we went to the step after you produced it in your brain. Now we're taking the next step, you see. The next step is after you produced in your brain, you have to project it outside. Because this reality, if it's not projected, the, it's not, you don't feel it as your environment. So the senses do not only kept information it's not a one-way street no all your senses work both ways so active in reception and active in projection in the projection of your reality outside and then you think it's outside you but you're really projecting it's like a projector during the movie you're leaving the film out there but in reality the film is in the projector see and the light is taking it out there it's projected outside so the projector is your brain the film is in it and you project it outside now, the act of projection and the act of producing light and all that, you, you see, takes energy. So a projector, if you keep it running for a long time, it will heat up. Same thing with you. I mean, seeing this reality, because it's a left brain operation, because the, your reality is uh, sort of made up through the use of the activation of the senses, what happens is it it's overheats if you use it too much. So you have to sleep. You can only use it for so long, and then you have to sleep a bit. You can't keep this reality out there for a long time because you need a certain amount of stress to have it. But there are easy ways. Whenever it gets too stressful, you daydream. So you activate the other part of the brain. And then it's, some daydreaming is relaxing. See, if a pro person has too many problems, he just daydreams. A bit, yeah, and then you feel... And it, with many people, it becomes automatic you see it becomes automatic the more you stress them the more they fly out and the more you concentrate because reality you know the left brain okay i see reality i go more into concentration puts more stress now if i am producing my reality and i have a projector i'm producing my reality that means i can control it i can put my hand in front of the projector make some images do things so I can play with this reality if I'm producing, but it doesn't work that way. Imagine that there are 100 projectors producing the film. 
I can't, wh whatever I do with one will not even be seen out there. Even if I close it off completely, I'm not, the film is still going on, you see. So it's like if I have one instrument with one string and I hit the string, I can stop it and the sound goes away. But now if I have a, a musical instrument and I hit one string and that's my string and then stop it, the sound will not stop resonance. So the reality through resonance becomes solid. Resonance is a form of interference of that and becomes solid through resonance. And then we can't, we, we are part of forming it, but we are not the total formers of it. So at the end, it's, it becomes our reality. So this is our perceived reality.